Okay. So, if you're watching at home, welcome. We're gonna today. We're gonna make a hook shot, um, and in the process of making our own very poorly designed hook shot, we are also gonna learn about React hooks, which is a different way to think about React. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna knock out very quickly, and we'll loop back to this later, is why do we have to introduce React hooks, right? This is just like another random level of complexity. You know, I'm just making your life a lot harder. It's not very fun. So the long story short is that the way that we first learn React, and if you learn React from the teacher light dev team or from the learning, the learning Labs crash course, you'll see that we taught React as like a class-based thing, right? Each component is a class. It inherits some methods. It has this life cycle thing going on. And things like state and props are attributes of the class. And that works, you know, it's not like compile errors or anything, but some very smart people who work on the React team said, this is kind of dumb. Uh, classes in JavaScript are actually not really like classes in other languages, and they're very confusing. And if you ever remember me going over the this keyword with you, that's where a lot of the confusion can stem from. So they said, okay, you know what's cool, hip and sexy with the new programming kids? Functional programming. They want to figure out a way to make React components just functions, things that have taken input, you know, return and output, uh, which makes it a lot easier to test, makes it easier to understand and write, and hopefully gets rid of all that confusing like class-based stuff. So that's what hooks are. Hooks are another way that you can think of specifically state, which is, if you don't remember, like the internal state of a component, what the component needs to know to work, and also um, how to get, how to change component life cycles. So today I'll kind of walk you through how that works, answer any questions you have about life, universe, and hooks, and we'll make our own fishing hook shop. At the same time, I also don't want to pressure you. Some of these concepts might seem like super scary or super new, uh, and you don't have to like rewrite all the old React code that you've ever touched before, or just in general, like there's no pressure that you have to use these things, but they're cool, they're good practice, and moving forward, most people are starting to write their components with hooks. So if you can, Use hooks if you can't, not the end of the world, but uh, that's the reason why we're here today. Anyways, let's talk some code. So uh, right now, we're going to just work with two components. We have our main app component over here, and we've got our hook card. So you know, here's what we want to do, OK? I want to be able to buy a hook. So each hook, you would pretend that like you know there's more photos here and more information. But each hook has like a certain stock, and I would press the Buy button. I would do something like make sure the person has enough money or make sure there are hooks left. And then I'm going to subtract one from the hook. For now, we're not going to worry about the whole money thing because money is just a social concept um, and social construct. So it doesn't exist. But also because it's more work I don't feel like doing. So we're just going to talk today very quickly. How can we press a button, decrement a number? Before we start, I want to check in with the React Pro Leisha here. So this will require some app state. OK, what do I need to change here? to get state to work in my card. Just give me like a quick rundown. Uh, uh, you'd need to add a constructor, so then you can initialize a state. Yeah, exactly. And so, then, oh, yes, keep on going. And then the yes. render method, that's all. Yes, so as Alicia said, we need to convert this into a class component, right? So we need to do like the whole function, hook card, class extends, react.component, and then we have to add a constructor, we have to add a state initializer, and we have to add like a render wrapper around this return function. We could do that, but I'm pretty lazy and I want to write less code. So instead, we're going to use our first React hook, which is called the state hook. And don't worry about it if this is confusing because I'm going to explain it kind of step by step. So first we have to import the state hook, uh, and the state hook is called use state. There's no hook in its name. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about it for a bit. Then, Inside the function, right? This is just a normal JavaScript function, so we can, you know, declare variables and all that jazz. I'm going to declare a new variable. I'm going to use the cost thing, so I know it's not going to change. And this is where things get a little spicy. I'm going to add an array. I'm going to call the first thing, I don't know, um, hook count. And then the second thing, set hook count. And I'll explain what this means in just a moment. I just don't want to have a compile error here. And I'm going to do use state. And let's say by default, we have 42 hooks. Great. OK, so this compiles. Before we actually use this information, what happened here and what did I do? So uh, this is kind of confusing syntax. If you haven't seen it before, this is going to look completely strange to you. 
but I want to make sure that I'm not like giving you the big spoof. Let me just zoom in as well so this is easier to see. Uh, so uh, this is maybe a little too zoomed in. Okay. So this thing is a thing called array destructuring. This is the exact same thing as this line of code or these three lines of code. Um, so we could do const use state array equals use state 42. And so you should now be thinking, oh, use state returns an array. Then we would do const hook count equals use state array zero. And then const set this is a bit of work array one. So if you've seen object destructuring, this is like the same thing. If you don't remember what that is, it's totally fine. But basically, this line of code is just short for this. So this thing returns an array, and we're going to just make the zeroth thing hook count and the first thing set hook count. So far, are we doing good? Can we get a thumbs up react if this makes sense? Beautiful. Look at this interactivity. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. Okay, so we're lazy. We don't want to write code. You know, that's life. So we're going to use this again. But if you see that syntax, don't worry about it at all. It's not super spooky. The next question you're going to have, though, is, okay, so clearly this thing returns an array, and the array has some things. But what are these things? What do they do? That's a good question. So the first thing, hook count, is going to be a value of something. You know, this is going to be the equivalent to using this dot state dot whatever. But if this is your first time learning React state stuff, that's fine. Forget anything. This is just the correct way to do it. So similarly, we're going to use a brace. Anything inside the brace means we're going to evaluate this thing as JavaScript. Hook count is just a variable. It's a normal variable. So I can just put hook count here. Does that make sense so far? So I can just slap it in. No problems. And if I hit save, this is going to work, right? On the screen here, we can see now we have 42 hooks left. So far, so good. Does this make sense? Yeah. So the important thing to know is that the first thing that use state hook returns is some value. OK, but this is pretty useless, right? Because this button doesn't do anything. So how can we make the button do something? This is where you know things get spicy. We're going to use the second thing. So it might not look like it, but this thing is actually a function. And mentally, this might weird you out, right? How is you know, a function returning a variable and a function? That's kind of confusing. But if you remember in JavaScript, you know, every single variable is just an object. So a function is just like any other variable. You can return it. There's no problem at all there. So in this case, this thing is a function. And we only know that because I told you. But we're going to use the function now. So as we've done before, we're going to change the on click handler. And if you remember what that means, it just means when the button gets clicked, we're going to do something. And then, very exciting, we're going to make a thing that we're going to put in here. So I'm going to ask the audience, OK? Classic React question. I want to put a function here. Do I include the parentheses, or do I not include the parentheses? Matt says include the parentheses. So like this. So this is kind of a trick question, but both answers are correct, which is why I just wanted someone to answer and be like, yeah, you're right. Um, we do want to call this function. I'm going to tell you right now that this function is going to update our hook count. But this doesn't work because we need to pass it something. And we can't do this, which is normally what we would do in React, because we need to pass it something. So what we're going to do is our normal trick. We're going to create an arrow function. So if you remember, an arrow function is just a function that has no name. And this entire statement returns like a function pointer or a function reference. So it doesn't call the function. It passes the function itself. And then in here, we're going to call set hook count. And then here's what we're going to do. We're going to do hook count minus 1. So there's going to be one important thing that if you came to the last React thing, you're going to be like, Matt, there's a problem. Leo, do you know what the problem is here? What, 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 would, what does the problem here look like? Excuse me. The problem here. Imagine if this was a this dot set state call. Is there a problem with me just taking the current value and subtracting one? 
Uh, yes, typically there would be actually. Because what would be happening is you would, you're not allowed to use the, um, what do you call it? You would need to reference it in the actual current state because typically you can't just directly mutate like that. Yeah, so what I was going for is that usually if you just want to subtract one from something, you have to use the whole previous state callback thing. It's very confusing. Don't like the confusion, so we're just going to get rid of that. So this is it. This is our working code. Uh, I'm sorry I'm just talking at you for eight minutes, but I promise that it will be somewhat fruitful. And this just works, right? If I hit this button, the number goes down. So what exactly, again, does this set hook function count do? So what it does is it takes whatever the parameter is here, and it just changes hook count to that thing. Does that make sense? Thumbs up in the chat. So every time the function gets called, it changes the value of the state variable to some new value. Yes? No? Maybe so? OK, solid. Majority counts. That's like a cur gets curved to a B. So this is it. This is all you need to know for hooks, basically. And this is a much cleaner model of state. So if you think about it, right, we didn't have to change any of the code here. We didn't have to create a constructor. We didn't have to do all of this random stuff. And we never had to use the key this keyword, which is like super, super confusing. So this is supposed to be a much easier way to come up with state. That being said, if you've practiced with class-based components your entire web development career, this is going to be kind of new and confusing, and that's totally OK. Again, ease into it however you want to. So now, if you're like paying a lot of attention, and if you're not, it's OK. No judgment. Um, you might ask, so how does React do this? Like, What the heck is going on? It's a great question. So every time set hook count, or in reality, any sort of set function is called, React will just recall the function again. Okay? And before the function is called, set hook count will update this thing. So then the next time the function is rendered, you'll have the correct hook count. So the right thing will show up on your screen. And the, uh, the function will still work because it's just going to be reset again. So in this case, right, this is exactly like using state before. Every single time the state changes, the function gets changed, refreshed, the state gets updated, and then you're done. So hopefully, this kind of made sense as another way to think about state. Sound cool? So before I talk a bit more about hooks, any questions about what we just discussed, slash, would you like to talk about life? If not, that's OK. OK, it sounds good. Or rather, didn't sound like anything. Um, so. The next thing I'm going to talk about very quickly is, OK, so we have the set hook count. Where can I use a set hook count? So set hook count, or this, is, this entire thing in general, is just called like the updating function or the set function. This can only be used in a React function. So you can't just make like a random function like this thing and then call set hook count. That's cheating. No bueno, not good. Eggert, very angry. You know, he'll give you like a C. You can't do that. Uh, the reason why has to do with this thing called closures, not super important. It's mostly about the variable scope. Just don't do this. You should only use set hook count you know, inside your actual React function. The second thing is you shouldn't use set hook count inside of like an if statement or a for loop or any sort of non-top level construct. And that doesn't mean like that much. It might not seem super obvious why, uh, but the reason has to do with this thing called function called determinism, not super important. But let's quickly talk about how we would fix that. So here's the problem, right? Um, we don't want to have negative hooks. That doesn't make sense, right? Like, you know, I sell a lot of hooks, but I can't give out more hooks than I supply. That would be like the Federal Reserve printing and giving out money that it doesn't have. And that never happens in real life economics. So we need to slightly change our function so that it works. But we can't put set hook count in an if statement, right? So normally, you know, we would do something like this, right? Um, we would do something like, oh, like, you know, if hook count is, is greater than zero, then we would do something like set hook count, you know, hook count minus one. But this is not good. This is not bueno. We can't do this, right? And the reason why we can't, the, the reason why we can't do this is because um, 
this is like against React's rules. So how would we do this instead? The easier way to do this is we would just create a new variable called new hook count. We would just set it to hook count, right? So, so far, nothing too spicy here. And then if the hook count is greater than zero, then we're just gonna change the new hook count. We're gonna subtract one. And then here we call use or set hook count, and then we do new hook count. So you're like, Matt, man, this is ridiculous. This was just a bunch of random code motion and we didn't do anything. And you know what? Maybe you're right. But the important thing here is that set hook count is not inside the if statement anymore. And React deep down knows that set hook count is going to get called every single time this function is called no matter what, which is again like a big portion of functional programming. So if we do this, you know, if we keep on pressing, I should have picked a smaller number. Let's, let's do two. If we do this, if we notice buying a hook doesn't work anymore, then life is good. Did that make sense? This is a bit technical, so I apologize if this is not the most engaging lecture of time. But does this make sense? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Beautiful. Okay. If you're super into React classes and React in general, and you want to join the React team, some thought is going to be burning in your head. And it's going to be math. What about my favorite part of React? The component life cycle. I love the component life cycle, you know? It's like my favorite thing. That's the only reason why I even come to your Learning Lab Crash Course videos. And I apologize, because we're getting rid of classes, and that means we're actually not going to have the component life cycle API. But it's not like React just said, oh, like, I'm going to call it a day, screw you, you're not getting any life cycles. There are other ways to do it. So the other way you're going to do it is with something called the effect hook. Um, and again, I apologize, this is kind of just me dumping a bunch of information on you, but you will to some extent, just have to bear with it. Um, but hopefully this is like useful, relevant. This is like, you know, cool. So the effect hook basically just gets called after every time render gets called. So this means when the component is first added to the screen, so like the first time, you know, nothing else has happened, it'll get called. And every time the component changes, it gets called again. So this is very useful for the kinds of operations where you need to like listen on something or wait on something. And as we'll find out, there's also a way that we can do this to set up a subscriber unsubscriber pattern. If you don't remember what that is, don't worry about it. We'll cover it in a moment. But first, let's just say I'm gonna update the title here because this says React app, right? And I wanna talk about like how great I am at selling hooks and you know, like being a master at selling hooks. So I'm going to call use effect here. So this is kind of similar to use state, right? We pass something in, but this time we're not going to pass in a value. We're going to pass in a function. And you, oh no, like things are getting spooky. And again, this is like one of the big things about React. You know, we love passing in functions. So whatever function we get gets passed in here is going to get called every single time the function renders. Cool. So in this case, I'm just going to change the title of the document. And if you have seen the notes, this is like the exact same example as the notes because it's the trivialist example of a side effect. Um, I'm going to use this feature called JavaScript list comprehension. If you haven't seen it, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal, but... Oh, there's like multiple components here. This is not going to work. Um, let's get rid of all these other hook cuts. We're only going to have one hook cut now. So very quickly, what does this mean? This is like a string, right? But then this thing means interpret the inside as JavaScript. So we're going to use our hook count variable, which as you remember is the number of hooks we have. Talk about the title. If you don't remember what this means, this just changes like the title of the tab. So if we click the button, we're going to see the title of the tab. I don't know if you can really see it because my screen is small, so I apologize, but the number is going down. Okay, so as a quick rehash of what we just did, very, very exciting, you know, the most exciting stuff. We passed in a function to use effect, and this function gets called every single time the component re-renders. Does that make sense? Yes, I would say. So this is useful for lots of different side effects, but one very useful side effect is maybe you want to, I don't know, like start a counter or something or start a timer or subscribe to an API and then unsubscribe from it later. So this thing replaces component did mount and component did update, which if you don't remember are the lifecycle functions that happen 
when a component gets put on the screen, and then the ones that happen every time a component updates. But in order to clean up something, we need component will unmount, which means we're going to take this thing and like bop it out of um, existence. And when we bop it out, we need to do some cleanup operation. So this is where the function that we pass in here, what it return counts is. So this is even more confusing, but here we're going to return a function. And this, all this higher level programming makes Egger extremely happy, but maybe confusing. We have, again, just as a reminder, you can return any object functions are objects. And the return function gets called before every new effect. So it cleans up the previous effect before it creates the new effect. Does that make sense? So right now, I'm just going to console log something and say clean up. So I want to make it very clear what's going on. So if I buy a hook, it's going to call clean up. If I buy a hook again, it's going to call clean up. And if I refresh the page, it calls clean up right before the page refreshes. So this is not exactly what component will unmount does, because it gets called before every single effect, which seems like a bit of overkill. But according to React, this is a great way to write better code. And you can disable the before every render if you really want to. We're not going to talk about that today, because oftentimes it's fine. You don't really need to. Um, but OK, fine. How do the timer thing? So we can use a good old friend set interval. So set interval get, takes in a function and like runs it every you know, x amount of time. So in this case, I'm just going to make an arrow function, our like favorite friend, and I'm going to call set hook count. I'm going to increase the hook count by one, I don't know, like every half a second or something. So if I do this, right, as you can see, the hook count is rapidly increasing, right? But there's a problem. Look at this. Look at the screen right here. What is going on here? Can someone explain to me? whose name is not Leo, what's happening? Alicia, I'm putting you on the spot. Do you have a guess as to why the screen is very glitchy and my shop is being bankrupted? Uh, I'm not sure. You know what, I'm going to let Leo take a crack at it then. This one's a hard one, so no worries. Well, if I'm being perfectly honest, I'm not sure that I'd be able to answer this 100% as well. But it has to do with the fact that use effect is updating um, and hook count is, well, hook count itself is pertaining to the, uh, sorry, what do you call it? It, it has to do with the, the fact that it's being rendered in this particular instance. So the hook count is at a different value than what it should be. Hmm. It's close, but no toy cigar. So the problem here has to do with cleanup, right? When we call set interval, and again, if you don't remember this, it's totally fine. Also, I see the time will be done soon. Um, the problem, right, is that once set interval gets called, this thing like runs in the background. You know what I mean? So even though the function will clean up, it will still run in the background. So here's the problem, right? Every single time set hook count gets called, this entire function gets called again. Does that make sense so far? Cool, yeah? When the function gets called, then use effect gets called. And use effect sets a new interval. So as, we, as time goes on, there's like 5,000 background intervals happening. And you can't hear this, but my computer is physically heating up right now because there are thousands of processes being created, which is like very bad, right? That's not good. This is not exactly what you want. And this has to do with asynchronous programming and you know, how you kind of control other resources. So the solution is before we you know, say, OK, uh, we got to bop this thing, bop a new set interval. we got to start incrementing again. We should clear the old one. We should say, hey, we're not going to use you anymore. Let's get rid of you. So we can do that inside this function. And if you use clear interval, which is the function that clears a normal interval, uh, we can do that. And how this works is we just do, we let this be some variable. Oh, that's not how typing works. Um, and then here we just type in interval. And if we do this and we refresh, now our thing is working as normal. There's no random jumping up or down. Um, if you are very astute and or a Paul Eggert fan, you'll have a very good question, 
which is how does this function know what interval is? Because this function is not being called from here. We can talk about it. It's a cool topic, but also it's not super important for the video. But long story short, what do we just do? So we use an effect hook. So an effect hook is how we do things called side effects. And these are things that you normally attach to component life cycles. So when we do something like setting something outside of our app, right? Like the title of our document, or we do something like creating a background process that updates a value or gets stuff from a database, right? We call this thing a side effect and we have to deal with it somehow. And React Hooks provides a way to deal with that with use effect. And there are two important things you need to know. The first thing is that use effect gets called or the, the thing you pass use effect gets called every single time after the render function is called. And secondly, that it calls the function that's returned from the thing you pass to it. Very confusing. Um, and it calls this function before every new effect. So in other words, this is like doing the side effect and this portion is cleaning up the side effect. Okay, overall, did this kind of sort of make sense? Any questions about life, the universe? Why well, I don't have a haircut? I have a question. Yeah, what's up, Matt? Um, is the use effect kind of like, is it like a React keyword, just like a um, little component on Mount is? Yeah, 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 that's a great question. So yeah, use effect is a React keyword. So this is part of, this is like called the effect hook, and it's an official part of React after version 16.8. And you can see up here, we imported use effect from React. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and don't name your own function use effect. That's just bad. Don't do that. <laughs> Any other questions about React hooks? I know I just threw a lot of information at you, so I want to make sure that we cover everything. So all of you are now React hook pros. Okay, glad to hear it. Um, don't worry if you don't feel like super confident with this yet. It takes a lot of practice, all that kind of stuff. One last thing I'll just point out, or sorry, two last things I'll point out. One, you can have multiple hooks. So it's totally fine for you to have like a bunch of these different, you know, use state hooks. And if you notice, right, all of these operate independently from each other. If I didn't name these the same thing, you know, this set hook doesn't affect this set hook. And so this is one of the really useful things because you don't kind of have to think of the app state as this one giant mega object with like 10,000 keys in it. And for example, the teacher light editor has this one file that has like 20 different things in the state. Super confusing to keep track of. With React hooks, all you have to think about is the pair between these two values, right? So this thing controls the value of that. That's it. There's no other cross contamination. And if you can think about it, this makes it really easy to test your React code. Because now you can test these hooks individually one by one rather than testing the entire system. This also means if you think about it really carefully, that you can pass this thing as a function to other components. So this makes it really easy to share state logic and all that kind of good stuff. If you don't know what that means, it's okay, but it's a problem that you might run into when you make a complex React app. The last thing I'll point out before I free all of you from the prison of the Zoom call is that you can make your own custom hooks. So we went over two really basic ones, use state and use effect. React ships with a few more. One really useful one is the use reducer hook that has to do with Redux. We are not going to talk about Redux. It's like out of scope of this crash course. But if you work on complex React apps, that'll make a lot of sense to you. But you can also write your own hooks that do lots of varying different behaviors. And they're very convenient and useful. And if you create complex React apps and you want to test them really well, custom hooks are really your friend. But OK, you've listened to me talk for 30 minutes. You thought you were going to escape this after spring quarter became online. Let's do a quick recap of what we talked about, and then we'll end the video slash do some questions. So overall, React Hooks is this different way to think about React components. We get rid of everything related to classes. We don't use uh, JavaScript classes. We don't use the this keyword, and we don't use component lifecycle methods. And the goal of this is to make our code easier to read, more maintainable, and more compartmentalized so we can easily test our code and understand what's going on. But the critical thing is that it's not designed to have different functionality. You should be able to do the same things with hooks and classes. Um, we talked about two hooks, we talked about the state hook. This is how you replace state and the state hook. You call use state 
it returns two things. One of the things is like the value of the thing. And the other return option is a function that changes the value of the state variable. And we also talked about the use effect hook, which takes in a function and it calls the function every time after the render function is called. And it calls the cleanup function before a new effect. And this kind of replaces your component lifecycle stuff, plus some other things, which is very convenient. And the final question you might have is, OK, so now I've learned this thing from Matt and listened to him for 32 minutes. You know, What's the point? Do I start using this code? And the answer is, you just use it whenever you feel comfortable with it. If today you go home and you say, this hooks thing made no sense. You know, We need a different leader of this Learning Labs crash course. It's totally fine by me. No hard feelings, right? But over time, lots of libraries and other developers are going to switch to hooks. And I want to make sure that all of you are aware of this feature because you'll see a lot of code in this feature. And hopefully, eventually, you'll feel comfortable enough to switch over to this too. And you'll be writing a lot cleaner, more maintainable code. Um, the very last question you might have is like, okay, so why the hell didn't you teach us this first instead of this dumb class stuff? And uh, that's kind of my fault. So I'll take the L. But we're kind of experimenting with how we teach React um, because, I don't know, a lot of people need to learn React. Okay, that's it. Um, if you want to learn more, the notes that I'll post in the chat right now have a bit more information. They're also more technical, though I had some fun writing them. And you can always look at React documentation. You can ask me and Leo any questions that you have, um, or just in general, you know, use your big brain, get the answers that you want. Before we close the video, any other questions about React hooks or about anything related to React, web development, stuff like that? Okay, cool, no questions. So, if you're watching at home, thanks for watching. Uh, please smash the sub, smash the subscribe button. Just just do it. Um, and as always, you can find all of our notes on GitHub. I'll post the link in the description. If you have any questions, you know, please let me know. And if you're on a Learning Labs team, which I don't think anyone in this call is, but if you're at home and you're on a Learning Labs team, uh, please work on your designs and think about how tools like React hooks let you make cool designs. But that's it. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Try not to die. I'll see y'all in the next video.